What is good, everybody? Today we are reviewing the AEW Unmatched Series number 9, Jeff Hardy and Brian Danielson. I think this is a very highly anticipated review, given that this is the first AEW action figure of Jeff Hardy. A very unique look at that. And I've been waiting on this dead gum street attire Brian Danielson figure. I do believe this is both of their first appearances in AEW, if I'm not mistaken, which is very crazy. I feel like they've been over there forever now, especially Brian Danielson. It feels like forever. And one thing I'm noticing, do you see that the Unmatched logo here is in silver on Jeff like it typically is? But on Brian Danielson, Danielson, it has gold foil down here. What's up with that? Why do we have gold foil over here? I don't know. But I'm actually really excited for both of these figures because I've been waiting on both of them. These were my two favorite figures from the set that I was excited to review. That's why they're going first here. But we do have Jeff over here. Say what you will about everything. I am damn excited for this figure, man. You got him over here. He's holding the chair. You got the unmatched number 66. Got the silver stuff going on. On the back, you get his debut there. Would have been cool to include the delete shirt, but I understand it. Not the biggest deal ever. That's not his signature, Brad. He usually does like a whole face thing. He like draws a silhouette or like a image of his face or a portrait of his face. So I don't know what that is. Rest of the figures on the wave down here. And that is pretty much your standard AEW unmatched packaging. And then we do have Brian Danielson. Now people, I've heard a lot of things about this head sculpt. I actually don't mind it, but we won't know until we unbox it. But I don't know. I felt like this head sculpt got a lot of flack for no reason. Somebody said it looks like a robot chicken character. I can kind of see that because they, you know, they kind of putty the mouth on there. They use some sticky tack and put the mouth on there in paper to make them look like they're talking. I can kind of see that, but damn, Robot Chicken, what an underrated show. I love that show. Back, dude, back when I was 11, 12, 13, oh my god. OG Robot Chicken is amazing, but Brian Danielson got the khakis in there. Got the on clouds, which I'm excited to unbox. Looking good here, white tee. Got him on the back of the white tee. Look how much more accurate the torso is in real life. Brian Danielson, all the different stuff, but nonetheless, man, we're going to crack Brian Danielson and Jeff Hardy out of the packaging, find out what these guys are all about, see if their figures of their debuts are worth a dang, and see how they compare to their other figure counterparts. So here's Jeff Hardy and Brian Danielson out of their packaging. I'm actually impressed with some of the things going on with these figures, but I definitely have my gripes. One thing you're going to notice on the Brian Danielson immediately is that he's on a ringside collectible stand, and that has never been done before in an entire, any review, any review I've ever done. I don't think I've ever had to put a figure on a stand to get him to stand up. This guy's feet are so loose for me. And he just will not stand up. He's too top heavy. I don't know what's going on. His legs are a little loose too. And the on clouds aren't. A, it's like he's walking on damn clouds, Brad. He can't stand up on anything. There's no material there to stand on. I don't know what's going on there. But we're going to break into the figures, man. We're going to get into the details, break down their accessories, get into the figures themselves. But if you guys want to grab these figures already, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourself 10%. Huge shout out to Ringside Collectibles, the number one online retailer for all wrestling figure related things. Nonetheless, man, we're going to dive into Brian Day. Danielson's accessories and Brian Danielson, and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at Jeff Hardy's accessories and Jeff Hardy. So getting into Brian Danielson's accessories, we do get a plain white tee, a microphone, and some interchangeable hands. And say what you will, but I love the damn plain white tee. And I like the plain white tees too. Hey there, Delilah. But you do have the white tee here. It's kind of a thicker material, but it feels really good, and it fits the figure well, no matter what torso you use, which we'll get into in just a moment. But it fits the figure really snug. I like this. I could see people using this on other characters for sure, and I like this. I like it. It's got the Velcro on it, and you don't have to worry about staining so that's good stuff and then we get an AEW microphone which we've seen countless times before but it is nice to see this because he did come out with it and it's a nice little accessory you can just throw in there with almost everybody and you guys know I have an ongoing joke about it but I just read the back of the packaging Brian Danielson's debut or this from this appearance is September 5th 2021 that is absurd and then Jeff Hardy's is April 12th 2023 the big discrepancy there between these two figure releases even though they're in the same set that's kind of nuts and then for interchangeable hands you have this I don't know key blast style hand sort of like Iron Man pulsing style hand you could slap the knee you can I don't know high five somebody you can have your arms wide open there's a lot of different things you can do with these hands you also get a pair of fists to beat the hell out of somebody which we've seen plenty of times and then you get a right mic holding hand to hold the microphone which is cool got to be able to hold the mic and hold weapons and all that good stuff. So getting into Brian Danielson at the top of the head sculpt, I like this head sculpt. I know a lot of people were dragging it. I don't think you need to drag it. I think it looks good. Now, is it a little bit oversized? Yes, but I think the likeness is there. It kind of looks like Brian Myers a little bit, but the color's good. I like the fade. I like the man bun. The beard sculpt's nice. Big old honeycomb mouth on there, even though he's smiling, but I like the likeness. I think it does look good, so there is that. Now, one thing I don't like it's going to be the torso. We've gotten into it, man. The torso is way too big for Brian Danielson. I don't know how easy that is to just change, but they certainly need to. I just think that every time they release this guy, his torso is too big, and I think that that is something they could work on. But it does look better with the MJF torso on there. If you switch that on there, it looks a hell of a lot better. But 
yeah, it is just a bigger torso. I've seen people use this upper torso for Wardlow, and it straps down, and it looks damn good. So that kind of just tells you it's probably too big. If it looks good on Wardlow, compared to Brian Danielson, probably a little bit too big there. But we do have these khaki joggers, which is interesting. They look a bit, I don't know, like vomity green, yellow, goldish kind of khaki color. But they're not bad. I would, I do wish they were a little lighter, but I do believe they were kind of a green color, you know. But you do have the little tie there in the middle. You get these nicely sculpted legs in here, which are nice. And then he does have the on clouds in here. These are actual on clouds sculpted in here. No logos, but these are on cloud shoes which I feel like everybody and their mom wears down in the south, man. Every nurse on the planet wears on clouds. I've never purchased a pair. I think some colorways do look good, but I'll, you won't catch me in those, Brad. Just won't happen. But I like the cuffs and the sculptures. But this figure can pose around pretty good, you know? It's got all the all the different articulation you want. He is a little bit loose up here, but I'm not going to use this torso anyway. But it is worth noting. He can do the splits. Legs are a little bit loose. I'll be real there. He's got the upper thigh cut, double jointed knee, shin cut, which is appreciated. Good ankle pivot there, and the feet go down and up. But the biggest gripe I have with this figure is he's difficult to stand, and I think it's because his torso is so top heavy but you guys can see he's kind of like bobble headedy and stuff but i do like the aesthetic of the figure i just think that it struggles in other areas but i don't know let's put the white tee on here actually let's not put the white tee on there or you know what let's put the white tee on there and then we'll do some switches and swappages so for your brian danielson figure comparisons we do have the unmatched series 5 here on the left with the njf torso fix up here's the unmatched series 9 with their normal torso all three of these have the normal torso versus the mjf torso and this just scales it way better man it just looks so much better i know the head sculpt's a little big but this is just my biggest overall issue with all AEW figures nowadays is for the most part I'd say 70% of them if not more are out of scale and I think that hurts them in a lot of ways because people want to be able to mingle these with their WWE figures and so that is the biggest issue I think facing AEW figures outside of staining but one thing that will look good is if you take it is cool to see these up next to each other and just to get into it you have the Unmatched Series 5 you have the Unmatched Series 9 the Ring of Honor figure and then the Pay-Per-View Revolution Target Exclusive Brian Danielson which I also like but you can pop this off right here and then pop this on this and now look at that doesn't that look just so much better man that looks like brian danielson wearing some damn joggers and then you can even take the white tee here and you can plop it onto here and this will look a hell of a lot better for you there so you get you know what i'm saying man this is this is the reason we buy that series 4 mjf acetone the tattoos off and then boom you put it all put them on all your brian danielsons and fix them up that's what that's the whole point of it right there look at that right there and the white tee still looks really good on on there so that's that's another point that's really nice look at that it still looks really good on that figure and you could acetone off the wrist tape and it wouldn't change a thing or hell you could even swap the lower arms if you wanted to lower arms probably be a little bit too long maybe uh, i think they're about the same so yeah that's just something to look at but look at that right there that's a nice little fix up brian danielson just something to think about man gotta change the torso so getting into jeff hardy's accessories we do get a decent amount here for a regular unmatched figure and starting off first we do have our steel chair with the jeff hardy artwork which i really like you can see is face there. This is something that Jeff Hardy does, and I talked about it on the packaging. He likes to draw his face or faces a lot, and they always look really awesome, and he's got his beard, his signature beard. They got the necklace in there. It's kind of just a picture of him here, essentially, but you can open it up here, and on the front, you get this other. You can see it's like three faces in one here in the middle. You have these little horns coming off on the sides, and then here is the body, but then if you flip it up like this, it's another... You will see that it's the cross, that Jeff Hardy or Hardy Boy's cross behind here, and it's another three three-headed or three-faced thing here that you can flip over there, which they did not have to add this to the chair. It's on the underside of the chair, so that's a really cool detail that they decided to add, which I think is awesome. And Jeff Hardy is a, a talented artist. I enjoy seeing him just work because one thing about an artist is you're going to find their mediums. No matter what they do, you can kind of like see a little bit of their style and everything, and I think he's very talented. I like, I appreciate his work a lot. So we do have the chair there, and you know you can sit in it, whatever. We've seen this mold before. It's nothing new, but we do have the Jeff Hardy chair, which I like. I think this is sick as hell. And now we're getting into the Jeff Hardy head sculpts, which I think this looks very good. This is something we never saw from Mattel. We never got a man bun head sculpt. I like this head sculpt. I like the, the underneath here. His hair is kind of that grayish dark color under here, and then it goes into like a five o'clock shadow. It's got his gauges in there that actually have holes in them compared to Mattel's. This looks good, man. I really like this. The likeness looks good. The facial expression, the eyebrows. Jeff Hardy has a very specific and signature look, and I think they captured it well, man. He looks really good. You even have the tattoos on the back of the neck or the ears there. Very good. And then you have the screaming expression. Now, mine did come with a little schmutz on his nose. I tried to wipe it off, but I haven't gotten it completely off right there. 
do need to get that off. It's not a big deal. Just got a little bit of extra paint on there, which you can chip off. It's not the biggest deal. But the likeness is good here. I think it looks good. The teeth look good. And it, everything else is pretty much the same except for the expression. So you know that the ponytail or the man bun looks about the same. And then on the other side, you can see he's yelling. And I like this. I like that we get both because, you know, he's usually yelling or he's just chilling there like this. You don't get a lot of different reactions out of Jeff Hardy. But the gauges look good. The likeness looks good. And that's all you can really ask for. Now, outside of that, you do get the mic holding or the weapon wheel chair style hands and they have all of his tattoos which look very good always appreciate the tattoos and i love that they have this tattoo over here because it does go onto his hand that's the roots look really good here just fantastic i love the tattoo deco on this jeff hardy which you'll see when we get to the figure itself and then his jeff hardy signature hands i'll notice that all the signature hands always are very small like these are pretty damn baby hand like i don't know why the hands are always so small when it's the signature hands compared to the other hands but it still has the tattoo deco which i appreciate and i don't like that it's bent a little bit i would like it to be straight you guys can see it's got a little uh i don't know uh, yeah so getting into jeff hardy i like this head sculpt like we touched on before man i think one of the best things about this is the tattoos i love that they've had every single tattoo they got all the throat tattoos in here the shoulder tattoos right there all of it looks damn good, and as you spin it around, you're going to see a ton of different Tattoo Deco. And this looks so much better than Mattel's. I'm going to do a comparison shot, but look, they even have all the shading back there. And I know they've added that He added this when he left, but all of these sleeves and everything like that, man, he's had this a long time. I know that they've been covered up by sleeves from Mattel and stuff, but... They just look so good. I like that it wraps up the entire arm, and you even have, you know, the, the snake wrapped around his entire arm and going underneath here, which is accurate. I do believe the snake's head or whatever ends, like, right under his armpit. But you have it wrapping around his entire torso and rib cage around those roots, and the roots go around and go up his arm, too. It's just such a sick tattoo, and it looks so good. And every time I look at this figure, I feel like I notice more tattoos, but even the forearm tattoo right here is accurate. I just love all the shading they added around here, too. Like, look, you can even see his cross right there, which is accurate, and all the shading. The devil, de you know, the devil demon head looks really good. It's just sweet, man. It's so good. It looks amazing. I think they nailed it. Even this shading and stuff on this arm looks good and accurate. You get into the torso or the crotch here. It is the Jericho torso, which I have mixed feelings about, but it doesn't look too, too bad. You have the stud belt here. I don't like the crotch pieces on the, a lot of the AEW figures. I just feel like they're so small, but he does have his rubber bands on each arm too, which was accurate. And then he does have these brand new sculpted legs, which are very, very wide. And they have a lot of wrinkles in them, which I'll show you in just a moment. But they have a ton of wrinklage in there. See the pocket? I mean, the, the pocket goes on the knee, which I think is a little weird, but he got shin cut and he even has his signature shoes on there. I want to say he was wearing some Adidas, but I'm not entirely sure on that night he returned, but the white sneakers looks decent. But as far as articulation, he can't really ab crunch too, too great. It, like, wants to pop off, but you might be able to get a little bit in there. It's just not the best. It, like, wants to pop off every time, which is the main reason I have an issue with this torso. I think they could have used a different torso for Jeff Hardy. I just think it's a little bit oversized, but... He has all the different stuff here. I like the double jointed arms. I don't know, man. I just think that it, because they use this torso, it makes his arms look pretty big. But when you put a shirt on here and everything, I just love the tattoos. The tattoos are my favorite part of it easily. But he can do the splits. He can kick forward really good. Not back that great. But you do get that double jointed knee. Just look how ugly that knee bend is. I know the... the the thick pants or whatever are accurate, but look at that. It hinders the knee joint bend because of the thickness of the plastic. Even if it is more accurate, sometimes you got to sacrifice accuracy for different things, but it's not the biggest deal. He does have thigh cut and shin cut here, which can get a little ugly, but I prefer shin cut over no shin cut. But his feet also have ankle rocker, and his feet actually move down and up, which is something you don't see on Mattel's that have long pants. You'll never see that. That does not happen with a Mattel figure, so that's also a bonus. But one thing that's also about this is I do want to take a look at some Mattel figure comparisons when looking at a shirtless Jeff Hardy figure. So for your Jeff Hardy figure comparisons, here's a bunch of different ones. We have the entrance crates with a custom head sculpt. We have the Elite 84 with a Survivor Series head sculpt. We have the ringside exclusive two-pack Jeff Hardy with an Ultimate Edition repainted right here with the necklace. We have the Unmatched Series 9 and then we have the Elite 84 with a non-painted Jeff Hardy head sculpt for no face paint. And then we have the Elite 57 Jeff Hardy over here, but I did paint the back tattoo on there. And I want to compare the the official Mattel back tattoo, my custom back tattoo that I hand painted, and the official Jazzwares. All right, man, so here's your comparison. This is what I was talking about. Look at how Mattel made it, like, metallic. See how metallic it is? And they, like, didn't put any of the orange or yellow in there. 
I did not like, like, I'm glad it was on there for the Mattel one, but just look at how much he's lacking tattoo deco. I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't like it, man. I didn't like Mattel's execution of it. But then you could compare the AEW one to my custom painted one. And you can see I went in there and added some shaded detail and everything like that. I even have the cross in there, the beard. Of course, it's not 100% accurate, but I thought it was decent for a hand painted back tattoo. I thought I did all right for the time being. There's a lot of like painted detail and brush, you know, like tattoo strokes in there and everything. But I don't know. Mine looks better than Mattel too, but I enjoy hand-painted stuff like that. But the back tattoo is my favorite part, or just all the tattoos on this figure are my favorite part. But one thing that you could do with this Jeff Hardy also is, I think if you take the necklace from this figure, pop this off, so you have like one of his loose necklaces from one of his Mattel figures, and then you come in here with like, I don't know, let's say one of these cloth shirts like this, and then you can throw this on here. Like, see, I got this custom shirt made. Throw this on there, and then pop the head sculpt off, throw the necklace on there, and then look at this, like, just a Simple Jeff Hardy promo attire. And look at that right there, man. That looks awesome. I mean, he's still way too damn tall, in my opinion, but I guess it's better for sure. I don't know. It just looks like a really cool figure. This looks great on display, I think. And then if you don't like that shirt, you can remove that shirt, and you could put maybe the Jeff Hardy jersey that came with the two-pack that came with the... Smackdown Elite 2 pack Triple H and Jeff Hardy figure. Throw this on there and look at that. Now you got a whole different Jeff Hardy. So if you don't want him to be shirtless or show off those abs from the Chris Jericho, look at this, man. You could easily just pop this on here. And there you go. Then you got a whole nother Jeff Hardy look right there. So it's kind of a mixture of old and new Jeff Hardy. That looks amazing. I like that. This jersey is actually one of my favorite WWE shop or items that they've ever made, actually. But that's cool. I like that, man. Yeah, dude. Look at the look at the differences. I, I just I think the scaling issue is my biggest problem with Mattel and AEW figures. Oh man. They gotta fix that. Or, I, I don't know, don't fix it. I just think that it would be a lot better for everybody if they did. But I think that about wraps up our 2-in-1 AEW Match Series number 9 Jeff Hardy and Brian Danielson figure reviews. Now, if you look at the figures here spinning around, I did add the cloth accessories and the necklace, right? And I think that really fixes up the Jeff Hardy. I actually like it a lot more with the shirt on there because it kind of covers up how ripped he is. And you can still see all the tattoos and stuff. I think they nailed the tattoo deco in this Jeff Hardy. I love the Jeff Hardy deco on the tattoos. I think it looks way better than Mattel's. Like, not even close. They made his back tattoo, like, chrome metallic or something on that Elite 84 Jeff Hardy. I love this Jeff Hardy in terms of the tattoo deco. I, I am a little bit weirded out by the pants and how tall he is, but at the end of the day, I still really like it. Like, the pants are very thick, which I was afraid of. I know the Briscoes are coming up. I think their legs are a bit thick as well, but I know people are going to be happy that he has baggier pants compared to the Mattel figures, but I think that these are a little bit too too wide, in my opinion. I think it's going to hinder some articulation stuff, but you can take a look at the photo gallery. I had a ton of fun shooting this guy. I love Jeff Hardy, though. He's one of my favorites of all time. He'll always be. And so this is a very fun figure for me to shoot around. He's just so awesome. Very nostalgic. Just one of those guys I've always loved and drawn to. Much like everybody. I feel like there's so many people out there that have Jeff Hardy as their number one ever. A bunch of casual people as well, you know. Jeff Hardy is uber popular. When you think about some of the most famous wrestlers, Jeff Hardy's name is up there, man. I'm telling you. Especially in just America itself. But I really dig the Jeff Hardy. This is badass. This is going to be a Jeff Hardy that I buy every time I see it because I can fix it up so many ways. And I like so many things about it. Is it perfect? No, I still think that he's a, the scaling's still off on these AEW figures. Feet are a little big. The legs are a little bit too wide. I don't like the Chris Jericho torso per se. I think they could have used a different torso. But all those things being said, you can really add to this guy. I love all the... You add these bells and whistles and look at this guy. I love the way he looks right here, man. It's a perfect promo Jeff Hardy. The tattoos are so damn sick. I love it. Head sculpts are phenomenal. I like the chair accessory too. It's a very unique piece. And they went all out on the chair on how you can actually see the, the paint detail on the inside or the underside of the chair. They didn't even have to add that. I don't even think people really recognize the chair that way. So that's cool. And then the Brian Danielson, the feet are very loose. The ankles have that weird sculpted wrinkles on it, which is weird. But the feet make this thing hard to stand up. And I still think the torso is way too big, man. I don't really know what else to say about that. The torso they use for Brian Danielson is way too big. They need to change it to the MJF torso. And I have him in the MJF torso right here with the white wrist tape. I think I am going to acetone that off because I think it really adds to the figure. The shirt looks so good on the figure with the accurate torso to me. And I am going to have to fix the guy. I'm going to have to do some different things. But I actually like the head sculpt as well. I think that I was right on the money when saying not to judge it too early. When we sell the promo shots, a lot of people were dragging the head sculpt. I don't think it's that bad. I actually like it. It may be a bit oversized, but at the end of the day, I like the likeness and the colorations and everything, even if it does look like Myers a little bit. I like it, even though the feet are driving me nuts. I'm going to have to do something there, but 
If you guys want to grab these figures, you can do so over Ringside Collectibles, but I had a ton of fun shooting these guys in the arena. They look awesome. Flaws aside, they are definitely worth the pickup in my opinion, and I think they're cool to have next to, you know, I love a good street attire. I love a good promo attire, and both of these guys are in promo attires or street gears. Even though you could kind of make this a Jeff Hardy, you could make this into a Jeff Hardy wrestling gear. I love me some damn promo gear, street attire, promo cutting gear, so that's good there, but that is pretty much going to wrap the video up, man. I'd love to know what you guys think of these figures down in the comment section below. At the end of the day, I would recommend both, but just know that you may have to do a little bit of fixing up. But anyways, man, that is pretty much going to wrap the video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts on all these things down in the comment section below, man. Huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel, man. I appreciate all those fellas over there. You guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys later. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>